Freudian thinking dominated psychotherapy in the late 19th century, but Freud's approach was limited to addressing unconscious drives, and the legacy of an individual's past. Alfred Adler was the first psychoanalyst to expand psychological theory beyond the Freudian viewpoint, suggesting that a person's psychology was also influenced by present and conscious forces, and that the influence of the social realm and environment was equally vital. Alfred founded his own approach, individual psychology, based on these ideas. Adler's particular interest in inferiority and the positive and negative effects of self-esteem began early in his career, when he worked with patients who had physical disabilities. Some people with disabilities were able to reach high levels of athletic success, and Adler noted that in these personalities, the disability served as a strong motivational force. For example, a Paralympic athlete may be driven by a powerful desire to overcome her disabilities and reach greater levels of physical achievement. Adler described this trait as compensation. At the other hand extreme, he witnessed patients who felt defeated by their disability, and who made little effort to improve their situation. Adler realized that the differences came down to how these individuals view themselves. In other words, their self-esteem. Before Adler, William James said that self-esteem is about a ration of goals satisfied, to goals unmet, and can be raised by lowering expectation as well as through achievements. Also, Charles Horton Cooley describes the looking glass self. The way we view ourselves is based on how we imagine other people view us. According to Adler, feeling inferior is a universal human experience that is rooted in childhood. Children naturally feel inferior because they are constantly surrounded by stronger, more powerful people with greater abilities. A child generally seeks to emulate and achieve the abilities of its elders, motivated by the surrounding forces that propel him towards his own development and accomplishments. For example, every child feels inferior because stronger, smarter people surround them. Inferiority motivated them to try to do and achieve things. In a balanced psyche, success relieves feelings of inferiority, and so confidence develops. In an unbalanced psyche, success doesn't relieve feelings of inferiority, and inferiority complex develops. Children and adults with a healthy and balanced personality, gain confidence each time they realize that they are capable of meeting external goals. Feelings of inferiority dissipate until the next challenge presents itself and is overcome. This process of psychic growth is continual. However, an individual with a physical inferiority may develop more generalized feelings of inferiority, leading to an unbalanced personality and what Adler termed an inferiority complex, where the feelings of inferiority are never relieved. Adler also recognized the equally unbalanced superiority complex, manifested in a constant need to strive towards goals. When attained, these goals do not instill confidence in the individual but merely prompt him to continually seek further external recognition and achievements. After Adler, Abraham Maslow says to feel both necessary and good about ourselves, we need achievements as well as respect from others. Finally, British psychologist Michael Argyle states that comparison shapes self-esteem. We feel better when we feel more successful than others, and worse when we feel less successful than others. If you enjoyed this video don't forget to like, share and subscribe to my channel. Thanks.